if you're a Wayland user today, whether that's on GNOME, KDE, Hyperland, Cosmics Alpha, or maybe something mer based most of your applications, if built in a modern toolkit, are running under Wayland natively. Some not by default, and instead have a toggle that you need to enable Wayland support, but no matter how hard you try, right now and for the foreseeable future, there's always going to be a couple of applications that just don't. A couple of cases where you need to use X Wayland, as in running X11 under Wayland. Whether that be literally anything running under Wine, that is being resolved, but there are still a lot of patches to go. Most native games just don't have a Wayland version. Applications built with older toolkits, like a GIMP for example, that is going to change when the GTK3 version eventually comes out. And then there are cases where Chromium can be a little bit flaky running natively under Wayland, or niche cases like in my situation, where I'm running OBS under X Wayland to make it so I can use global hotkeys. And something I will occasionally hear is that X Wayland is a crutch for Wayland. X Wayland is really, really good as a fallback. You might argue a little bit too good. So much so that in some ways, it's actually held Wayland back from getting improvements that need to be done. And I don't know whether I agree with this or not, but I do think it's definitely worth discussing. First thing, why do people say this? Well, let's not consider Wayland today, where things have really come a long way, and for the most part, you can get away with a mostly Wayland environment, and with some key choices here and there, you can probably do entirely Wayland minus gaming. Let's consider Wayland back in its earlier days, back during the era of early GTK3 where there wasn't Wayland support in the GTK toolkit. Let's consider earlier versions of QT, let's consider earlier versions of Electron, back when all of these, if you wanted to run them under Wayland, would need to be using X Wayland. Especially in its early days, but even now in many ways, one of the greatest things for Wayland adoption is the fact that X Wayland exists, because without it, swapping from X11 to Wayland back then would have been like swapping from Windows to Linux, where a lot of the applications that you were using just simply weren't going to work. You would need to find all of these new applications, and when Wayland was very young, those in many cases just did not exist yet. The fact that X Wayland is there means that you could take basically all of the applications you had, with the exception of things that specifically only make sense on Xorg, like Xranda, for example, Xclip, things like that, and they mostly just work. Now, not perfectly. There were definitely render issues early on, and if you're an NVIDIA user, very recently, there were issues with copy and paste and various other issues, but for most applications, they basically just worked like they did directly under Xorg. And of course, there are still tons of other cases where things just don't work or don't work as expected. Like, you can't use Redshift. Maybe you need to find a new screenshotting tool, a new video capture tool. At least back in those days, now things are a lot better. But most other things are pretty much just fine. Whilst this no-thought, easy migration process has been great for the user, a lot of developers approach Wayland in a very similar way as well, and a lot of things that probably have needed to be dealt with haven't been dealt with because X Wayland is such a good crutch. Now, of course, there are very key applications where they just couldn't work under Wayland without a solution being in place, like video capture being done with OBS, which has now been done through portals and pipe wires. But there are a lot of other cases where, even though the application wouldn't work properly under native Wayland, it does work properly if run in X Wayland. For example, you need a multi-window application. 
X Wayland. You need global hotkey support. X Wayland. You have some weird Wayland native render bug. X Wayland. And tons of other issues just get resolved or at least masked by using X Wayland. And this has kind of led to the situation we're in today where distros like Fedora adopted Wayland by default in 2016, long before anybody sane would say it's ready. Ubuntu followed in 2021. Gnome and KDE, both in the upstream projects, treat Wayland as the default way to use the system now. And yet, we are still seeing protocol discussions for things like window positioning, window icons, global hotkey support has an upstream portal, but no one uses it. And a lot of these discussions are recent discussions. These are discussions that all started within the past two or so years. Now, I talk about global hotkey support in the context of OBS and Discord push to talk, but this is a very minor part of it. The real issue with global hotkeys is accessibility, and this is a big part of the reason why accessibility is an absolute mess under Wayland. These are discussions that needed to have happened over 10 years ago, but nobody needed to discuss them because they didn't need to really be resolved because X Wayland was such a good way to resolve the issue. But X Wayland was never intended to be the long-term solution. It was supposed to be a temporary stopgap as things get improved. But it is such a good stopgap that nobody until very recently actually felt the need to have this discussion. And that is the main point that people are trying to get at here. X Wayland is so good, and it's made the adoption of Wayland so easy, both by users and developers, that developers just haven't felt the need to get involved in these protocol discussions, to try to resolve these issues that need to be resolved eventually, because X Wayland just does it for them. I do think there is certainly some merit in saying that, but I don't think all of this can just be blamed on X Wayland. I think a lot of it is just due to the adoption of Wayland in the first place. NVIDIA, for many users, has been effectively unusable on Wayland until literally days ago. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who've never had problems on NVIDIA, but it is a race condition, which means some people will see it, some people don't. It depends on the order of execution. And for the people with issues, they have had really bad issues. The flickering in applications has made things completely unusable, let alone the fact that a couple of years back, you literally couldn't do GPU acceleration on NVIDIA. So... That's enough to stop people anyway. Then, as I mentioned earlier, there is the accessibility stack, which on X11 was held together with hopes and dreams. It was mostly written back in the early 2000s and hasn't had much maintenance because, sadly, accessibility is just not a major feature that most people want to work on because, yes, it is incredibly important for the people who need it, but it's also a very small group of people that actually need it. So often what happens is the only people working on it are the people who need it, which is also, again, a very small group. So you see the problem here. Without some concerted effort to make sure accessibility is strong and good, it becomes an issue. Then there are issues with forced vSync and gaming, which, again, only got resolved relatively recently. And if you're a desktop environment user and you want to use something that is not GNOME or KDE, you just can't use Wayland. The other desktop environments are getting their Wayland versions done soonish. Budgie will probably be one of the earliest ones to finish, but XSCE still hasn't got anything ready. They're working on things. Mate, Cinnamon, all of these still need a lot of work to get their Wayland side done. Then, of course, there is the very small subset of users that care about network transparency as well. I have to mention them because 
they're going to comment otherwise. All of this has led to a lot of people simply not being able to use Wayland, and there is a lot of value in dog fooding in running the software that you are trying to improve, and if there are a lot of people who are just not on Wayland, and a lot of people who are not on Wayland are developers who would otherwise be working on software that would be running on Wayland, there's a lot less of a reason to improve your Wayland support and get involved in those Wayland discussions. Most of the work in this space is being done by volunteers, and volunteers tend to work on things that are directly affecting them. And if you're not using Wayland because of any of these reasons I listed before, you don't really have any reason to get involved in trying to improve this. And in the cases where things are being worked on by a company, let's say Discord still not properly supporting Wayland, even though everything they need is in place to get things working, like screen sharing, for example, Linux is an already tiny market. And then Wayland on top of that is a tiny market of a tiny market, and it becomes really hard to justify actually supporting this unless you have a person on your team who is dedicated to making it happen. Since X Wayland has been here for a very long time, I think it is fair to say in many ways, it has acted like a crutch and many developers have used it like a crutch. But I don't think that inherently means that things would have been better if it didn't exist. I don't have a crystal ball I don't have the ability to see across different timelines, but I kind of expect a result not too dissimilar to what happened with Murr. So initially Murr wasn't just a Wayland library like it is today. Murr was set to be this new graphic standard on the Linux desktop. Canonical was really pushing it. They thought this was going to be a big thing. And there was some initial hype around it. But then Canonical said, hmm, you know what? Doing this on the desktop maybe doesn't matter. They pulled out of the whole unification thing and desktop unity. And with that, Murr effectively died on the desktop with it. Now, eventually Murr did come back as a Wayland library, and Murr is in a much healthier state today, but that is only fairly recently. For a long time, Murr just basically vanished. And maybe another comparison is Arkin. Arkin is a really cool experimental graphic system for Linux, and this has been worked on for quite a while now, and even has support for both Wayland and X Wayland applications. Like, this is actually pretty cool. Whilst it does have a very small and very dedicated group of users, it's just never moved past that experimental stage. And whilst Wayland was started with the developer working at Red Hat, if it didn't show some promise early on of early adoption, I can't imagine it would have really moved past that early pet project stage where he was working on it in his spare time. I don't really think that without X Wayland, Wayland adoption would have ever really happened, and Wayland would be in the state we're in today. I think it is fair to say that because of X Wayland, now a lot of protocols are not being discussed. But at the same time, without X Wayland, we probably wouldn't have Wayland today in the first place. But what do you think? Do you think X Wayland has acted like a crutch? Do you think Wayland even would have made it to today if X Wayland didn't exist? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And you will adopt Wayland, whether you like it or not.